Hello and welcome to the program. Today we're talking about Operation Unifier, Canada's military training mission in Ukraine. Since its launch in 2015, Canadian soldiers on rotation have trained over 13,000 Ukrainian service people. Operation Unifier has many aims, for example, helping Ukraine bolster national security capabilities amid Russian aggression, driving reforms in the Ukrainian military and contributing to international stability overall. I'm pleased to say joining us now to talk more about the results, future aims and challenges of Operation Unifier is Lieutenant Colonel Frederick Kote, commander of the Joint Task Force Ukraine. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for the invitation. So uh, you took over as commander uh, in Ukraine in April this year. How would you describe uh, your experience working with the Ukrainian military? Oh, it was outstanding. It was uh, the, the collaboration is, is very good. Uh, I learned a lot, and, and so did the rest of the team. Uh, we were getting a lot out of the interaction. Uh, we, uh, I, we feel that we've, uh, we, we've achieved something, some of the aims that, uh, that were developed by the Ukrainian Armed Forces and the National Guard, uh, especially uh, with the opening of training centers like uh, Shiroki Land in the south of the country. Uh, Stari as well uh, uh, for the National Guard, so we're, we're very happy about that. How do you measure the success of Operation Unifier? Uh, well, you just mentioned a measure of success, which is the, the, the actual numbers of, uh, of people we train. Now, success could already, uh, also be defined in uh, how the, the, the training we deliver has a lasting impact on the uh, capacity of the Ukrainian security forces. And uh, I'm very proud of a couple of achievements we've had with regards to the training of non-commissioned officers, where recently uh, the general staff issued orders to uh, facilitate the professionalization of, uh, of the non-commissioned officers. And same thing on the military police training uh, that has moved further into professionalization and systematization of the training. Do you have measurable targets that uh, need to be met by 2020? Uh, the general staff has, uh, has come up with a number of uh, target dates for uh, a number of initiatives. Uh, now, I have yet to fully develop it and, uh, and, and figure out what that means. But uh, yes, we, we, we do have lines of efforts that are uh, already defined and uh, along which we're progressing. I, I recently visited the military base in Desna, where a number of uh, Canadian soldiers are stationed, uh, which is near Kiev. Um, it seemed that to me that there were fewer Canadian instructors on the ground compared to previous years. Um, is, is that correct? And um, in what other ways has Operation Unifar changed over the years? Well, that's actually uh, a measure of success, the fact that we can withdraw a little bit uh, or uh, some troops from one location actually means that that particular uh, location is doing well and that the Ukrainians are taking over, uh, the, 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 are taking the lead of their training and they're able to uh, produce that injuring quality over time. Uh, which allows me to redistribute people to other places. And as I mentioned, we are currently training uh, Ukrainian instructors down in Shiroki land. Uh, we, uh, we have increased our contribution to the National Guard of Ukraine as well, both in Zolochev and in Stari. So it's, it's normal. We're a little more distributed around the country uh, than in previous years. Uh, and. and Progress in certain lines uh, of, uh, of operation have allowed that. During my visit, I was told that high level command structures in Canada and Ukraine uh, have established a line of contact now. Um, there's more co cooperation on a structural level uh, between the two countries and between the two militaries. Why is this important? Well, it is, it is critical if we want to achieve an enduring change in Ukraine that the tactical training we deliver is anchored into an institution that can actually uh, take advantage of that training through uh, ensuring the career progression of, uh, of Ukrainian soldiers, through systematizing the training. So making sure that the training from uh, one iteration to the other will, will always produce the same 
level of quality at the end. So that, that is why that engagement at the institutional level is, uh, is critical to success. Hundreds of Canadian soldiers have been sit stationed in, in Ukraine with every new rotation. Nearly two, 200 troops come in, come into the country. And this means that the Canadian soldiers have direct uh, contact with Ukrainian soldiers who have real battlefield experience, who've come back from the front line in Donbass and uh, who've been fighting Russian-led forces. Uh, why is this real battlefield experience useful for Canadian military personnel? From a Canadian perspective, it just makes us better and more pertinent because this is uh, this is a very high intensity uh, uh, war that is being fought in the in the east of Ukraine. So it gives us that exposure into uh, what I would say the sharp end of uh, of uh, of war in uh, in the 21st century. From a typically unifier perspective, from security force uh, capacity building. What the Ukrainians tell us is precious because it enables us to make the training more pertinent, to make sure we integrate the lessons they learn into the training so that we make sure that the training remains uh, pertinent and uh, appraised of the latest developments. So Canadian military is now training based on some of what is being learned in Ukraine? To some extent, yes. So what sort of role do Canadian reservists play in uh, Operation Unifier in terms of uh, combining their military experience with other skill sets used in uh, the uh, out, outside the army? So I'm talking about the Canadian reservists. Uh, the Canadian reservists, well, they're an integral part of the task force, uh, the same way that uh, in Canada, the, like we, we talk of one force, integration is uh, is, uh, is the big word, is the, the, the flavor of the day, uh, and that's perfect. They bring, the, the reservists actually bring a lot to the task force, uh, and I'll take uh, two examples. The first one, I have a, a captain in Starry working with the NGU who in his civilian life is a policeman. So he's now working with a law enforcement, uh, an organization that's got a law enforcement uh, mandate uh, and he can bring that experience that he has in his civilian life. I have another reservist who's down in Cherokee land, who's got a background in civilian engineering and project management. And he is now in a training center that is uh, trying to develop its capacity on, on all fronts, infrastructure, finance, uh, training, methodology. And he brings that expertise that he had. Uh, my Public affairs officer, I, uh, I'll mention him because he got me here, uh, is actually a teacher in communications in the civilian world. So they bring, he brings that depth that, uh, that, that, we, that, that is actually, um, uh, it, like, that we, we would not have or, or that we would have in a different way if it was another person. Let's talk about a bit about your day-to-day -day life. What does a typical day for you look like? Well, for first of all, I have to say that we do so many different things across so many locations uh, that, depending who you ask on uh, Operation Unifier, you will always get a different answer. Uh, for me, my job, well, in addition to uh, commanding the task force, so all the, the, the tasks about managing personnel, managing, uh, ensuring the command and control of operations, uh, taking like the management of resources. Uh, what I do uh, in terms of outside engagement is about facilitating the work of my subordinates, making sure that uh, I enable them through my daily interactions with the Ukrainians. So I'm in so many different meetings in a given day uh, that, uh, like, for example, this morning I was with the multinational partners in, uh, in a meeting. So the U.S., the U.K., uh, Lithuania were there with the Ukrainians. Uh, Sweden was also present uh, around the table. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Uh, that lasted for about two hours. Then I moved over to the National Guard of Ukraine for another engagement. Uh, now I'm here. After that, I'm moving to another 
engagement flying back to uh, to my uh, main headquarters tonight for another series of meetings tomorrow so that, that that's what my days look like uh, we were speaking before the interview and you mentioned that you uh, would like to come back to Ukraine but as a tourist absolutely this is uh, this is an outstanding place to be and I'm actually it's been uh, it's been one of my uh, my, my big phrases since uh, since the beginning is that it's amazing to be deployed on a military operation in a country where I would like to come back and, and, and bring my family. And this is a, a sentiment that is shared across the task force. Uh, I, have, I have heard a number of my, uh, my soldiers saying the same thing. And just yesterday, uh, when I was asking uh, a, a number of them, one of my teams that's in, uh, in Vasil Kiev, what is going to be the one thing you're taking back to Canada. And I was expecting something of a military nature. No, what they're bringing back is that time where they went fishing with the Ukrainian soldier that they met and they, they, they became friends. Wow. So that, that, that's the feeling we have. Uh, leaving Ukraine. Well, then I'll, I'll turn this question on, on you. What is the one thing that you'll be taking away after uh, you leave Ukraine? On the military side, it will be, I think, those achievements I was talking about uh, with the, um, uh, regarding the non-commissioned officers, regarding the military police. Uh, what I will take away is also that spark that I see sometimes when I speak with, with Ukrainian soldiers where I have that feeling as I'm talking and as, as I'm watching the training, okay, this person got it. Like the, the, that little twitch, that little smile where you feel you know that they've learned something, uh, that's what makes the difference. Another thing I'm going to get back on the more personal uh, front is that feeling of uh, closeness, proximity between Canada and Ukraine. Um, I, I had never realized how, how similar the two countries are, how similar the cultures are, how, how much we share a common experience. So I'm taking that back with me. Well, thank you very much for joining me in the studio today. My pleasure. Thank you again. We were joined by Lieutenant Colonel Frederick Cote, commander of the Joint Task Force Ukraine. You're watching UATV. Yeah.